Hi everybody, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles Stories of the Supernatural. And I hope you enjoy this new show, whether you're viewing it on the internet or listening to a podcast version of the episode. I do want to thank you for being part of my audience. You can also find links to videos or podcasts on MiamiGhostChronicles.com as well as where you can submit your story about any eerie experiences you've had, which I would love to hear about. Just go to the Submit Your Story tab. Please subscribe to our channel so that you receive notification of when we release a new show. And find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This is where I usually live stream and where I give you a behind-the-scenes look at locations where new episodes are being filmed at, I also tell you about all the interesting guests that will be appearing soon on Stories of the Supernatural. I hope you enjoy the show, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi everybody, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles Stories of the Supernatural. How is everybody doing today? I'm doing very, very well. And of course, one of those reasons is that I have a guest that works in the field of the paranormal. His name is Logan Corelli, and he has over 17 years of experience investigating haunted locations across America. He holds a PhD in parapsychology as well as a doctorate in metaphysics from the University of Metaphysical Sciences and he also holds a number of certifications in paranormal study. He's appeared on Animal Planet's The Haunted and the film Ghosts and Legends of Oklahoma. He's also been featured in newspaper and magazine feature stories. Uh, Logan regularly organizes paranormal conferences, conventions, and fundraisers to help educate and support the paranormal research community. He is also the author of the book Haunted Heart of America. So how are you doing today, Logan? I'm great. I appreciate you uh, talking to me today. Oh, absolutely. It is my pleasure. My pleasure, totally. And what I'm going to do, Logan, is I'm going to ask you what I ask all my guests at the beginning is, how did you get involved with the paranormal? Uh, did you have an experience as a child? Did something happen to you when you were an adult? How did that come about? Well, <clears throat> it actually first started when when I was a child, and that was kind of the opening for the book. Um, and that was, you know, I kind of wanted my readers to get kind of familiar with what kind of pointed me in the right direction of, of investigating the paranormal. And like a lot of people, you know, the curiosity is always there and, you know, the excitement and, and wanting to discover the unknown and things sure. like that. So all of that was there, but um, I'd say my childhood experience probably pushed me the hardest towards uh, looking into uh, ghosts and spirits and, and stories and you know, I always found myself growing up uh, watching the TV shows and anything that had anything to do with the, the paranormal, the unknown, I was always really uh, interested in. But uh, no, the, uh, my childhood experience actually had happened when I was eight. And okay. uh, my, my mother and uh, a family friend was coming back from vacation. Uh, which we took regularly, our family vacation for the summer. Mm -hmm. And we had decided to, we decided to stop at this, uh, this lodge, um, this hotel that we had never stayed at before. And my mother thought it would be interesting to, to give it a try. And, you know, she, she'd heard people that had stayed there before and whatever. Okay. And really everything that kind of took place that night uh, by the time, you know, that we had left, um, really was was traumatizing, especially for an eight year old who okay. knew absolutely nothing about the paranormal. So you know, um, I, I I found myself terrified and and yet you know later on very curious as to you know what the cause of that was. Was it real? What was it? And okay. you know, as I went through school and and uh, became an adult, I decided that I was tired of wondering. And uh, I wanted to go out and, and actually start uh, finding answers and, and doing investigating and things like that. So um, I started officially okay. in uh, January of, of 2000, and mm -hmm. I've been going ever since. Okay. 
Okay, mm. so I need to ask you, what was it? Because you made a very uh, significant description, which is was traumatic, which means it wasn't like, it sounds more than, oh, we heard a knock on the wall. You know, it sounds like it was something significant. What happened? It was very significant. Um, and kind of the way it started was I was the first person to have an experience. And um, I'll, I'll kind of go into that in a, in, into a second. Okay. And, uh, you know, my, my mother and her friend uh, both ended up, we all ended up having experiences together. And I don't know if I had my experience first just because I happened to be in that specific location or if I was being targeted or, you know, it, I, that I, I don't know. But what had happened was um, we, we went through and did the daily thing, the swimming and, you know, the activities and whatever. And we got to where the evening was coming around. We wanted to retire for the night and get in our room and whatever. And uh, I was kind of the errand boy. So anything that needed to be done, of course, they're going to send the kid, right? You're right. So they said, hey, um, our ice bucket is empty. Go, go down and get us some ice. So – I didn't think anything about it. Something I'd done numerous times, and you know, you don't expect something, you know, that that's going to happen to you or whatever. And mm -hmm. uh, so I got in, I got the bucket, and I, I headed off down the hall. And uh, where we were, our room was um, on the other end of where the the I had to walk there. And right. So, so you were, in other words, it was a distance to go and get the ice. Oh, yeah. It was a long walk, uh, long walk down the hallway. It was over by the, uh, from what I remember, the uh, the stairs, stairwell door. And uh, I had to, you know, make that walk all the way back once I had got the ice. But once I had gotten the ice, I, I had turned and I had started to, to walk away. And something had got my attention to the point to where I had to turn back and look to see if somebody was there. And when I had turned back and looked, I, I didn't see someone standing in the hallway. The door was closed to the stairs and everything appeared normal. Mm -hmm. But I had noticed on the right, the wall, there, there was a, a shadow silhouette of a person oh. um, that was on the wall. And, you know, for me, you know, I, I, I refer to it as a man because, you know, it was very tall. Um, you could see, you know, features of the nose and, you know, legs and all of that stuff. And so, you know, I, I took a moment to kind of figure out what it was. I mean, at that time it wasn't moving. It was just kind of like the shadow and mm -hmm. I could see my own. And, and so, you know, uh, without, you know, taking a lot of time to, to really analyze the situation, I, I just decided I was going to turn around and walk back to the room. Okay. So. I turn around and I start to walk back and I look over my shoulder and I notice the shadow starts walking. Okay. And this was after I had already taken a, you know, a few steps. So this is now following me. Oh. And again, I, I see nobody in the hall with me. Um, and at this point I know enough to where um, I know something's going on. This isn't right. This isn't normal. But my instinct said, you know, keep going. You know, try and ignore it, whatever. I start walking. I start walking a little faster. And it kind of starts getting a little faster. Oh. And eventually, I guess I had gotten so afraid that um, I started running. I just yeah. broke out and ran. And uh, I ran and I ran, which seemed like forever. And I got to uh, our door, and I, I just I threw the ice down on the floor, and the ice went everywhere. And I'm banging on the door, you know, help, let me in, let me in. Something's out here, and and wow. you know, <laughs> it seemed like an eternity of course, for my man. mother to come and to get to the door. So I remember I back up, and I see this coming down the hall, and I'm 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 back against the door. And I see this thing when it gets directly even with me and the door, it just disintegrates, just oh like my a god, cloud of smoke, oh and it's gone. Uh... And um, I, I, I'm like, you know, shaking and stuff. And, and the door opens, and I fall into the doorway, and 
my mother's standing there and she sees the ice and she sees me and she's, you know, what's going on? And she's looking out the hall and, you know, she's thinking someone's trying to. Right, get me, right. You know, and so I get in the hall and, you know, I, I didn't bother with the ice. Um, I, just, <laughs> I left it there. Just like, forget so, the ice. Uh, I kind of collect myself and, you know, we're all in the room and it's safe and, you know, it's quiet and whatever. And she says to me, she says, uh, <clears throat> what happened? And uh, I was trying to explain to her, you know, I went and got the ice. And I saw this, this, what, you know, I, I thought it was a man and nobody was there. And, you know, I'm telling her the story and, you know, she, she's kind of um, playing it out as, you know, I, I, I was scaring myself and, and okay. maybe I saw something that just wasn't there. And so she didn't put a lot of, uh, you know, uh, she didn't think it was really that big a deal at that point. It was more and, like overactive you know, imagination on your part. Right. I'm a kid. What do I do? Mm-hmm. You know? um, so, and, you know, at that time, you know, people just didn't have experiences like that. Uh, but I did. So, you know, I come in, I, I told her, I'm like, you go get the ice if you want the ice. I'm not going back down there. So, you know, she went and got the ice and then come back. And one of the things that I had remember, and I, I don't think I actually put this in the book, was when, when we were there, we had stayed on the fourth floor of the, of the, the building. And uh, the fifth floor above us, which was the top floor, was being renovated or it was under construction or they were doing work on it. Okay. So, you know, all during the day, we're hearing these, you know, bangs and saws and drills and, you know, all those people, you know, up there working on, on the place. Okay. And uh, it did going to be a, a big deal to us. And, uh, but then, you know, it started getting evening. And she's kind of like, uh, we're going to be working up there. You know, we don't want to be, you know, midnight and they're still, you know, banging around or whatever. So, right. You know, she had called the desk and she said, uh, you know, hey, um, you know, I'm not trying to not trying to cause a problem, but I'd like to know what time these guys are going to start stop working because, you know, are they, you know, they have a time. It's getting late. And, and the, the whoever was was on the front desk had told my mother that, um, you know, look, they leave at five o'clock. You know, nobody does any work at night up there. Uh, they they leave and leave the site and whatever, so nobody's and, up there. And what time was and, it when she called? That they, in other words, that she was that you guys it, were still hearing construction work going on. Right, right. We were hearing the bangs and the knocks and the noises, which we had assumed was the construction workers. Right, right. So, so you know, they told her, "Look, nobody's there." She said, "Hey, you know, you may want to send some people up there because we're still hearing the noises. I don't know if they're working late or someone's messing." with this stuff or whatever okay so um that kind of you know um that that was over she had called and sometime later um she had called again and she said uh you know hey i called about the noises upstairs did, did you talk to the people or whatever and from what she had told us um the lady said you know ma'am um we sent our security personnel up there. Uh, it's it's no one's up there. It's dark. It's quiet. There's nothing. And she wow. said, well, you know, come into our room. It ain't quiet. You know, there's right. and things going on. So no one ever came to the room, and that was kind of like dropped. Mm-hmm. So a little later on, uh, you know, we we start hearing knocks at the door. It was like three knocks. It's like knock, 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 and. You know, the one other thing I remember about um, being there and even in the hall and on the floor was I never saw another guest on that floor. Oh. I never saw anybody go into the room. I never heard neighbors. I never heard um, I never heard anybody that would indicate there was another guest on the floor. There could have been. Maybe I just never saw them. But uh, I didn't remember anyone you know, while we were staying there on the floor that I can remember. But we hear these knocks. So, you know, my mother was always really cautious, right. you know, and, and, you know, looking to see who it is, who is it, no answer, um, goes away. Well, you know, 10, 15 minutes, knock, 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 same series of knocks, 
You know? oh. and she looks out. She doesn't see anything. And this had happened a couple of times. And she even went as far as to, you know, chain the door and open the door and look, hello, is someone out? You know, that type of thing. No answer, no body, whatever. Right. So after it happens a series of times, she's convinced that it's a kid. You know, and she's like, you know, this has got to be some kid messing with us. Okay. Knocking and running off and whatever. And, you know, she's trying to rationalize, you know, all the stuff. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, Mm -hmm. so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get behind the door and I'm going to scare them. The next time they knock on the door, I'm going to be waiting for them. So she she waits at the door and sure enough, and, and the knocks were getting... Uh, closer in time so you know it was was 15 minutes then it was 10 minutes then it was like five minutes so it was getting a lot closer from from the knock and um, I remember the knock came as expected and she flung open the door and she got out "Ah!" and nobody was there and I'm talking about I'm talking about a series of seconds right so even if Someone was there. They didn't even have time to get in a room. Right. They didn't have time. I mean, you know, if someone had held the door open and, you know, they were right next door to us, mm-hmm. there was not enough time for someone to, to do that. So she's puzzled. And I remember she, she backed up into the door and, and backed up into the room and she's got her hand on the door holding it open. So, so what was that? And all of a sudden, while a hand is still on the door, bam, 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 what? right on the door, while she's holding it, and she's screaming. You mean Ooh, she's holding the door open? She's holding the door. Oh and it God! Was bang, not knock, not knock, bang, like with a fist. And you know she screams and she slams the door and she locks it and she gets <laughs> she gets her luggage and the the chairs. And that pays the door, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, now we're trapped in here with whatever it is, and we can't go out. And, you know, um, we all kind of got, there was the three of us, okay. we kind of got together in a little puddle, and we backed up to uh, to where the beds were. And, and all of a sudden, the TV... We had a we had a small little TV with a with a turn knob, you know. Okay. Because this was this was back in the back in the eighties. They didn't. I mean, they had them. Right, right. The room we were in didn't have remotes and stuff like that. So it was a simple little television, and the TV kicked on on its own. Oh. And I remember the screen was bright red. There was no picture. There was oh no. God. It was just a bright red, and there was a man that was laughing. What? And it wasn't like it wasn't like a sinister, you know, ha 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 type of laugh. It was right. just like a man was laughing, like oh my laughing God. at me. Oh, and my mother is like, "Oh my God, it's laughing!" And, you know, she she was like, "You know, what do we do?" And because you know, now it's getting to the point to where um, it's it's you know we feel like it's dangerous. Or something. Sure, we don't know what's going on. So we go unplug the TV, right? Kill the power. Go up. Go up to unplug it. TV goes off. So we're sitting there, and we kind of take a step back into the room. And you remember how I told you those sounds were going on, the knocks and the bangs right. and all of that stuff? Well, after the, the TV event, it got very quiet um, and very still. And that was eerie in itself because, sure. you know, it was almost like anticipation for something, mm-hmm. but we didn't know what was going to happen next. And we're, we're barricaded in, in the room, you know, can't just, you know, leave. I uh-huh. guess dead, but but uh, anyway, so we started hearing this, this howling sound and it was like, uh, like wind. Oh my and, you know, it had picked up and picked up and you know we we this was in oklahoma so w- when we hear winds like that you know we think tornado right you know, danger and we had our you know the window was open not open but the blinds we could see outside no trees were moving there, there was no uh nothing blowing around 
but it was from within the room itself. So uh, we uh, were, were, were just confused as to what this is. Well, the wind had picked up so fierce that the actual glass from the window was shaking. What? It was like rattling. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't tell you exactly how long that lasted. I mean, to me, it seemed <laughs> like forever, but I, I don't think it was really that long. And then stop. Right. Nothing. Everything is still in quiet again. Nothing's going on. And then probably the craziest thing out of all of that started to happen. And what had happened was there was a patch on that window that looked as if it was fogging up or oh. uh, someone was breathing on it. Oh, my okay? God. <laughs> Don't say that. And it, it's, a, it's a section of the window, okay? The weird thing about it is you could clearly see it was coming from outside. And you're up on a fourth nobody floor. Nobody was outside. Right. <gasps> nobody was outside oh. the window. And we started seeing like these indentions in this uh, <laughs> in, in this fog. It would disappear and reappear. And I, I, you know, I I don't know if it was like fingers or hands or you know what it was, but we could see there was like these little indentions. And then the whole thing that topped it off. We were all sitting there, and it came up and it said, "You're dead." What? And we left. You're dead. And oh, God. we got the stuff and we ran. And I, I have never checked out and left. Let me ask you, and, and uh, did your did your mom, I know you were a kid, did your mom ever get the feeling like these people knew what was going on but were just like playing like, oh, we don't know? Well, I, I think really, I don't know so much she felt like they knew what was going on, but I think people had reported things before. Right. And maybe they just weren't telling nobody, maybe. Okay. Uh, you know, and, 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 you know, over the years, you know, when we had talked about that, she always, you know, had, you know, theories as to what it could have been and, you know, what it was. And, but none of us really knew. And the person that was that was with us, you know, we don't talk to them anymore. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, me and my mother still talk about that place. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, it's been demolished since. But, oh, it uh, has? The place was yeah, demolished? I, I, oh, wow. Yeah. I went there back in 2008 or six, no, seven, eight, whenever it was before it was tore down. And okay. I, I tried to get them to let me in there mm-hmm. because I said, look, you know, I, I could go into the whole event, but there's something that happened in there. And I, I'm not just convinced it was me. Right. And, you know, later on when I'm, when I'm meeting people and, and, and coworkers and colleagues and and all these people, you know, I would tell that story. And, you know, some of them would say, you know, we stayed there before and we heard noises. Or oh. you know, we felt something uh, in, in certain areas or whatever. Okay. So I, I know it wasn't just us. I know that, you know, it wasn't like we brought something there. Or, right, right, uh, right. You know, that type of a thing. But, um uh, yeah, that that kind of started a, a chain a reaction. And how old was uh, the place? Did you ever find out how old it had been standing there? Well, I I don't know specifically. I, I tried to do some back research on it. Right. And unfortunately, there's not a lot online that I could find. But I do know that uh, um, it's been there for a while because I had a, some grandparents that had a, a wedding anniversary there. Okay. Um, you know, so I'd say it was there at least 50 years. Right. And a lot um, of things and, happen in places like that, you know. Yeah. And, and this place was, was close to a lake. Okay. And, you know, it was in, a, well, I was told it was in a native land. Okay. So everyone's always saying, oh, it could have been on a sacred burial ground or, or right. you know, it could have been this, it could have been that or whatever. And, you know, from what I had heard... Uh, they were tearing the building down to actually uh, build a casino on top of it. Okay. So um, I don't know if that's happened or not, but uh, it would be interesting to. Oh, you know, absolutely. If, if they did. 
Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you know, I get some weird things so, going on with no clue whatsoever, like where it came from. <laughs> oh my god! Exactly. You know. Yeah, I can see why so, you said that you were traumatized. Um, I get it now. I understand. Yeah, um, and and it was really weird because you know during the daytime when you know none of that stuff happened, right. and I I don't know if. Maybe we were put on that floor for a reason. Maybe no one else would ever stay on that floor. Right. That's uh, a, that's maybe a... there just wasn't enough guests. I, I don't know. Uh, and, and I can't say for sure one way or the other. But uh, what I can tell you is that something was there and something was really going on. And, uh, you know, it, it took me, <laughs> you know, 10 years to want to go back there again. Right. But I, I would have. You know, I would have gone back and, and you know, investigated it and, and see if I could and, – and that probably wouldn't have happened again. But um, I would like to, to uh, at least come away saying that, you know, there was something paranormal happening there. Right. Or that so, you did some type of research and you said, okay, you know, I found that whatever incident took place. Or, well, you also said that you already had some other people saying that they had some type of um, – they had heard noises, but it sounds like yeah. you, uh, when you were there with your mom, you guys got the full blast. It was like everything. Yeah, I and you know the people that I had talked to um, about their experiences and, and what they experienced, it, it was never really frightening. You know, they mm-hmm. they always said that from what I could remember, you know, oh, we heard noises or we felt this or. You know, um, comparable to what we went through, but uh, you know, they they had gone back. You know, it wasn't something that right that stopped them from saying, "Man, we'll never go back there again." From, yeah, yeah, and you know, whether that was done to keep us from coming back, I don't know. Um, you know, I I don't. We were never really disruptive, or uh, you know, we never did anything to to, to really cause problems in the hotel but you know what sometimes it's Uh, all in the timing you know that some people go and if the timing's all wrong nothing happens and then somebody's there at the right time which it sounds like you guys were right as in right to witness this oh we're we were in the middle of a hurricane (laughs) spiritual hurricane you know um and it doesn't sound like a residual it sounded like an intelligent haunting oh absolutely you know, I could only imagine if I had some kind of recording equipment going oh when that was going on. There's no telling what voices would have come through. Oh, sure. Uh, or, or if we'd have stayed the night. I mean, I, you know, it could have escalated. I, mm-hmm. Maybe when we left, something else happened. I, you know, I, I can't say one way or the other for that. But uh, I know there was no way any of us was going to stay there. Not after it, you know, pretty much said we were dead. Well, let me so, tell you something. That part uh, where you're describing that this thing is pacing you and running after you from that ice machine, I would yeah. have, oh my God. That has got to be, no wonder as a kid, what an experience. Right. So, you know, you know at, at that age, there's, there's still the monster in the closet. And, right. You, know, you, you don't really know about uh, what the possibilities say. If that happened to me today, I'd probably run right for it. You know, right. Like, well, uh, it's different. You know, uh, of course, you were a child and you weren't. It's not like you were going out there. You were just going to go get some ice and. Right. Innocence. Yeah. Right. Innocence. It's different when you're first of all, when you're an adult and number two, when you're doing it on purpose, hoping that you're going to stumble across something like this. And so right. you fast forward, you grow up here. You had this experience, which, by the way, what an experience. And what happened? You Absolutely. you joined a group, you formed your own group, or did you have another experience as an adult? Well, I, I didn't really form a group right away. When I when I first started um, going out and investigating, I was either by myself or with a friend, and okay. we were mainly doing like cemeteries and abandoned mm-hmm. places. And we, you know, back then here where we were. There wasn't a large network of uh, investigators and, and people that were really, uh, you know, working together and, and okay. you know, somewhere that you could mentor with. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was I was on my own for, for a few years, and and then um, I slowed down a little bit. And then in uh, 2004, 
I, I met a colleague, and uh, he actually convinced me that uh, you know I needed to start a team, and we needed to uh, kind of get more in depth with it, and invest in some equipment, and try to branch out and get into some of the places because you know um, there was a lot of stories around. You know, you say. I'm looking for ghosts or haunted right. places, and it was like, oh, well, I heard about this place and mm-hmm. this place. So there was always, like, the referrals, but no way that we knew how to really get into them at that time. So they were kind of, like, on the list, but mm-hmm. we just we had just getting started. And so we got started, and we started going around, and uh, a couple of our uh, – First investigations as a team is, is documented in the book um, for several places. And then um, I got hooked up with another group, and that was when I probably had my most profound uh, adult experience that um, absolutely 100% convinced me that uh, this was legitimate. Um, I, if I ever had any doubt. Right. Uh, in my mind of a paranormal, it went away. Um, you know, when I had, uh, had this experience, and it was actually in a hospital, and it is documented in my book. Oh my God! So, of course, a hospital. Uh, there you go. God, those yeah. are hotbeds. More than people realize. I when I saw that building for the first time, I I, I had chills and I was excited, and, and I told my colleague, I said. I am going to get into that building. I said, I don't know what I've got to do or when it's going to happen, but I'm going to get inside that building. It was beautiful, huge, five-story hospital. And uh, about a year later, I, I did. And I was able to get in there, and uh, it became a, a long-term research site that I was involved with with a, a larger group of people. And it was like an every weekend deal. Mm-hmm. And um, one time <laughs> I had asked um, one of the people I was working with, you know, can uh, can you lock me in this building by myself? And he's like, yeah, yeah, we could do that. We'll just leave you in there and oh. we'll go you know, eat or something. Oh, and, you God. know, <laughs> you, thinking about it now, um, uh-huh. I, I was I was really – Wanting to, you know, kind of get to know the building. Okay. But um, I, I kind of got confronted by its most notorious residents. And um, I wasn't investigating, you know. It's not like I had all this equipment on me. I was walking through with a flashlight. I was just walking around to right. just explore. Yeah, you were exploring, and right. I was exploring, you know. And, and I made that very obvious when I would go floor to floor. Hi, I know you know probably know who I am. I, I'm just here looking around. You know, hello. Can you, know, can you make a noise? That kind of stuff. And uh, it wasn't scary. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it was just like, like I said, I was going around and, and getting familiar, more familiar with the building. I've seen right. some areas that I hadn't been in. And, um, it, it was really interesting to see all of the um, uh, different parts and, and rooms and. I didn't really think that much about it until I got up to the fourth floor. Oh, the fourth floor again? again. <laughs> the fourth floor. <laughs> I know. I know. Go ahead. I'm a pattern here. Uh huh. So well. um, I got up, and in that hospital, that floor was utilized for uh, surgery and trauma and, oh. uh, you know, the critical. Uh. Everybody that died on that floor died up there. Yep. Yes. That's what I was about to or say. In the mm-hmm. ER. Yes. Yeah. And they had a, um, a section uh, cut out where it was piled off where they did those operations and stuff, the operating room and whatever. And I'm really feeling good about you know, walking through, and, and I stop, and I'm looking down, and I'm just talking. You know, hey, if anyone's here, make a noise, you know, do something. And I heard a noise, and it was like right to my right in that operating room. Okay, I heard that. Thank you. You know, and I'm still looking down and talking. And I look up, and there's a woman standing uh, in the corner in front of me in the room. A woman? And, uh, oh, God. It was, a it was a, uh, the only way I can really describe it was 
it was like a blurry, blurred image of a woman. I okay. could see it was a woman. I saw the long dark hair. Mm-hmm. I saw the long, what I perceived to be a long white dress. Okay. And standing there, and I didn't know what to do. Because you know, I was about I, to I, ask I you, was she dressed in a hospital gown, or? But you I, said she had a long I, black dress. Okay. Well, I thought it was because that's what, it, and I'll, I'll kind of touch on that in a minute. Okay. But uh. I, 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 I didn't know what to do, you know. I, I said, you know, hello. You know, I see you there. Um, I'm just here I'm walking around, and, you know, I'm kind of nervous just talking. And all of a sudden, this arm reaches up, and it starts projecting towards me. And when I say projecting, I mean it's like it's like moving closer. It's not walking. Oh. It's just like coming closer. And... I felt this like a tidal wave of, of, of apprehension and anger and fear. And I, I, it was like all the blood ran out of my body. And I just started backing up. And I said, look, <laughs> I, said, you know, I, I, I feel like I've upset you. And I, I'm sorry. I, I don't need to tell you. I'm, I'm going to go back the way I came. And, and I'm going to leave. And I so- turned around. And so what you're I describing is she's kind of gliding in a way is what you're saying. She's like going towards you, yeah. but not like with a walking motion, like it, a glide motion. No, it wasn't even a slide. It was like here, then there, then there. Oh. And, and, you know, almost like a, a oh my. teleporting, I guess, <laughs> how you would say it. And I spun around and I started walking because there's two small wheels on each floor, okay? Okay. One behind me and one in front of me. If I was, and the one in front of me was past her to get over to it, and I wasn't going to risk that. I, I was already too uncomfortable, and, and uh, I wasn't doing that. So I turn around, I walk the rest of the way to the floor. I go in the door, and I start going down the stairwell to the, to the basement. That's how we... That was the bottom floor first that we had to get out to the ER. So about the time I got to, I'd say, between the third and second floor, approximately, I felt as if someone was riding on my shoulders, this, this, almost like this presence. This, okay. This, um, it wasn't like a pressure, but you could sense something was there. And I felt, I, I had short hair, and I was wearing like a collared shirt, and I felt this. Oh my cold God! Cold air, breath. what? Oh my cold sh- air. It, it wasn't like Arctic, rigid, freezing air, but it was cold, and I, I'm, I could hear it was a woman. It was like a female breathing. Uh huh. And I think to me that was just to say, "Don't stop, keep going." And that's exactly what I did. I did not stop. I didn't say anything. I didn't acknowledge it. I kept going all the way down until I got to that basement door, and bam. Went right out into the basement, and the door slammed behind me, and I stood there, and I had to catch my breath, and I said, "What am I doing?" <laughs> I said, "You know that that was that'll probably never happen again. I I need to go back up there." Oh, and that only lasted a few seconds. I I convinced myself that wasn't going to happen, so I said, "Well, okay, I'll, I'll just I'll just." Uh, I'll go back out. I'm, I'm not going to do anything else. So I turned, and I started walking toward uh, the exit, which is down by the emergency room. And I heard a voice, and it said, come here. What did it say? And it said, come here. Come here. Oh, crap. Just like that. Oh. And so I turned, and the voice was coming from the other hall that was – because you know the building's kind of L-shaped, so – You've uh-huh. got the main long hallway, and you've got the side hallway. Right. Well, in the basement, in the basement, that side hallway was the morgue, and that's where they did the autopsies and all of right. that stuff was on that side hallway. And so, you know, I thought, well, wait a minute, maybe I'm hearing contamination from outside because, okay. you know, if, if people were in the parking lot, you could hear cars, you could hear talking, okay. you know, because people talked normal. And so I'm thinking, I'm just hearing something outside, and you know, I heard it again. And it, it didn't say, come here. It said, come here, come here. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, I, I need to look. So I got my light, and I walked all the way down to uh, 
the hallway. I turned the corner. I went down. Now, keep in mind, uh, the, 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 the rooms are empty. So there's no closets to hide in. There's no places where somebody could not be seen. Okay. Uh, all the doors were open. I didn't have to actually, you know, go indoors or anything like that. The only thing that people could even remotely come close to hiding was um, like a shelf type thing, and people couldn't fit in them because they were drawers. Okay. So um, I established that nobody was there. And uh, I was like, I had to be hearing something. Maybe it was something else. So I got back into the hallway. Well, I heard it again. And it was here, it was coming from the ER side of the building. So I'm going, oh, well, maybe it was coming from there. So I did the same thing. I did my, my walk. I checked the rooms. I went down to the end. No, you know, nobody was there. Nothing was there. Then I would hear it back there, and I'd go back there. And I just made these rounds. And I, <laughs> after a while, I, I just got so frustrated, and, and I knew what was going on, you know, and I just, I let out this, this loud sigh, just this, you know, frustration. And I heard this. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. And, oh and I God. said, I'm done. Uh. I'm done. I'm done. And I went to the door, and I banged on the door, and I got out of that building. So that happened. Months later... My, my colleague that I worked with there, we, we later became a group colleagues, and we had a lot of things together. He, we were talking about uh, images and pictures and things that had been captured because it had a 24-hour um, multi-webcam that you could go online and view at any time. Okay. And you could see what was going on. It even had audio hooked up that you could uh, listen to or whatever. And uh, so, um, he, and he said, you know, I got some pictures and different things. And, you know, a few other people had sent in because they would watch these all of the time. And, you know, they'd say, oh, this looks like a face and this looks like a hand or whatever. And they would kind of serve. You know, you kind of see some of that stuff in there, maybe, possibly. But he, uh, he showed me a couple of pictures and he said, this was probably some of the best ones that we ever caught. And what it was, was um, it was a picture on the second floor. And you could kind of see the, the my colleagues were kind of in the background walking, so they were kind of blurry. But uh -huh. right beside them, there was a perfectly good image of a woman with long, dark hair in a hospital gown. Oh. You could see, like, the back. You could see, like, everything. And, and I did not tell them about my experience there. So um, okay. when I saw that, um, I was really – that was like confirmation for me. Right. I was about to say and, this uh, is I, – I, That was almost as, 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 uh, as shaky for me as the experience. Uh, and then he showed me another picture, which was in the basement that had a – it was an infrared camera. But again, you can see this woman in what looks like a dress uh, standing next to them. And uh, that's apparently what she would do. She would just watch people, the, like the voyeur, you know. And when you saw and, her that uh, first time up on the fourth floor, what was it uh, an operating room or was it a regular room? I mean, even though it sounds like she went all over the place. Yeah, well, I saw her at the end of the hallway. Her okay. It was like against the back wall. Okay. But I was next, I was in, I was right in front of the operating room it was to okay. my right okay so um i'd say she was probably and i'm not good with distance but i'd say she was a good 25 feet in front of me when i wow. first at saw her because i was almost at the end of the hall and uh because like i said i was just i was just wandering around i didn't even make it to the fifth floor not that night so uh and i didn't want to i, I really didn't kind of want to go back in when we did our group thing, but I'm like, you know what? I'm in a group and I have to worry about it. And, and of course nothing happened at yeah. least nothing like that. So no, that's pretty um, significant. <laughs> pretty. Yeah. And, uh, and, and there was, there was another photo that was, that was taken. Uh, it was of a, a, like a shadow apparition that was really impressive. And I really wanted to put those pictures in the book to show the readers exactly what I had seen. 
Okay. And unfortunately, the quality was too low, and they, they couldn't right, do it them. Could, but yeah. I still have those pictures, and I show people, and uh, they they were really shocked when they saw them. How long had so, the hospital uh, been closed by the time that you were able to get in there? Uh, from what I dug up, it closed in 1978. Oh, that long? Yes, oh, okay. it was in the mid. It's in the middle of a residential neighborhood. It like takes up a whole block. Okay. There, so literally all around it, houses. So this thing had been it's, standing it's there pretty, empty for a really long time, then. Oh yeah, absolutely, oh. absolutely. And, and I had talked to uh, people that uh, uh, actually worked in the hospital, and I talked to a woman who was born there, oh. and she told me. Not only did her father know that the place was haunted, he personally knew the spirit of the woman. He knew the woman really? that uh, supposedly had haunted it. But I never really got that information, you know, to, to validate that. And you know, I've had some some psychics come in, and one psychic told me that um, this woman was very aggressive. She died in childbirth, and uh, her child was taken away, and she's, you know. You know, she's very territorial, and I'm thinking, no kidding. You know? Uh-huh. <laughs> but, um, and again, I, I don't know if any of that's true or not. But, right, 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 um, right. That was what she had, that was what she had picked up on. And uh, that was just like, that was just like the most extreme experience. That place was uh, the, the best site for paranormal activity that I'd ever seen. I, I saw believe things it. there manifest. Uh, that I've never seen anywhere for a lot of really big, well-known, you know, haunted locations all over the country. Um, but that place, it was like it never, you know, <laughs> never let you down. And is it still is it still standing quiet, abandoned whatever. now, or did they ever do anything with it? Well, the last time I saw it, it was abandoned. Um, mm-hmm. I had a couple people tell me they were going to renovate it, turn okay. it into like a senior center or something like that. I don't know. Oh. I don't know if that's true, but okay. uh, yeah, it's been sitting there for years. It was a, it was a, a beautiful building. So that is, um, and but you know what, hospitals in and of themselves, I think it's just because a lot of people sometimes they transition to death without realizing it. Either, let's say they came in from some type of trauma, they're unconscious or they're sedated yeah. or either because they're getting operated on or because they have some type of really heavy pain medication or they kind of l- lose that moment of transition. So I know that hospitals are infamous for having a lot of discarnates that sometimes are walking around going, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Right. And, you know, plus too, I mean, you know, some of them pass very quickly mm-hmm. and I don't think that really has time to register Right. You know, what's going on. And I think it's worse with the insane because they can't understand really, you know, what is what is going on. And, I, right. and I've had some run-ins with that, too. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, the the one thing that, that we do when we go out is, is one of the top things we do, I guess, is, you know, try and establish that communication barrier. So, sure. um, you know, it does it always work? No. Um, but I think it's essential that, uh, you know, if we're going to try and get any type of, uh, interaction, cooperation, um, I, I think that's one of the more important things, you know, right. that they, we kind of know, they know why we're there and what we're doing. And, uh, we, we don't mean to, uh, impose, which, um, <laughs> definitely was the case, uh, with me there in the hospital at that time mm-hmm. or so I felt but um, but yeah so after that it's just been uh, you know foot to the gas and been kind of going all over the place right and I don't know about so, I don't know if Logan if you re- yeah, if you've come across this you know sometimes you have two types when and we were talking intelligent hauntings you'll have the ones that they're anxious to communicate or if if you have a sensitive or somebody that can connect with, they want to reach out like and say their story or find out what happened or, Hey, you know, where do I go now? And then you have the other ones that the last thing they want is contact. They make themselves scarce. It's almost like they kind of know, or, or they think, right. what if I'm told that I got to get out of here? 
So they kind of like, those right. are the ones that sometimes you find either up in attics or cellars or basements or that unused room because they're really not keen on communicating or in other words, the letting the cat out of the bag that they're there. Right. And, you know, I think a lot of that too has to do with the individual. Yes. Um, you know, some a lot of times people are frightened by spiritual activity and they're like, leave me alone and you know, don't bother me and go away. And so they don't really get a lot of people saying, hey, come talk to me, come interact with me, you know, sure. uh, who are you? I'm curious, whatever. And then I think part of it, too, is like the people uh, before they had passed, I think a lot of their uh, personality goes along with them in the afterlife. Oh, sure. You have people that are born shut-ins and maybe they're, you know, they have a fear of people or whatever, mm-hmm. they're, they're going to stay away. Yes. So um, I, I think it goes into, you know, a lot of different factors. But, uh, um, you know, every case is different. So, you know, we always try and reach out, though, as, as best we can. And, you know, it's harder that I've seen kind of in my experience with, like, younger children mm-hmm. um, that um, we really kind of get that interaction, especially in a group, because I think that when we're in a group of three or four or five it's kind of intimidating, so a lot right. of times I'll kind of break people up, or I'll go by myself, or with one other person, or whoever. And right. um, it tends to work, you know, because it's it's not as intimidating. And exactly. you know, a lot of it has to do with how you talk too. So um, you know, if if you're yelling, oh no, uh, I'm not. I don't. Before, I, I don't I'm think like, that that provocation or that there, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, even just as a general tone, I'm like telling them, look, they're dead. They're not deaf. You know, you can talk normal and they'll hear you. And people are like, who's here with us? You know, and I'm like, just, you know, that's that's kind of, of a frightening, you know, approach for some people. Um, but um, like I said, it's 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 different for everybody. And, and a lot of it has to do with where you are, too. So and the people that's been there before you. Because uh, a lot of the times, if people go in and provoke an anger, um, that that's gonna that's gonna keep them at bay for a while. You know, they're not gonna be as willing yeah. to come out because who's to say we're not gonna insult them and and you know make them do things or whatever. Oh, absolutely. So I, I always try to be respectful and say, you know, I'm not demanding you do anything. I'm just asking if if you're not comfortable, that's fine understand um you know we have multiple ways to communicate with you and there's been times where i've caught evp where um you know i didn't have a lot of 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 activity up front hi everybody Uh, i apologize i had to cut the interview short i got this super important phone call i've got my mom in hospice and uh she was we're taking her from one place to the other and one of those things that you can't control the timing on and luckily I was able to get the bulk of the interview with Logan he was very gracious and I told him look I have to stop the um, I have to stop the interview right now I I need to take this phone call Uh, so again guys I apologize but it's one of those things you cannot help and anyway getting back to the interview (laughs) let me tell you something that experience well both experiences the one that he had as a kid forget it that's like what (laughs) i would have told my mom i'm gonna go sleep in the car okay that's incredible that story in and of itself is like what and then the other one that he had which i'm sure along the way you know he's had experiences but that one where he goes looking for the tiger's tail and he found it when he comes across this lady who apparently had been cited by other people. So she's, and that, come here. (laughs) I'm telling you, I've been on dozens and dozens of investigations over the year. And there's some, like I said, that are just, they end up, for lack of a better word, being boring because nothing happens. And maybe you'll catch an EVP in the background, but nothing as significant as actually seeing something or much less actually hearing something with your ears. Especially something that's saying, come here. (laughs) Okay.
Okay. Yeah, see, that's the part where if you're a group, everybody decides to regroup out in the party lot. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Hats off to you, Logan. I mean, uh, you're very brave. And by this I say, this is a lot of the times that, you know, when you are paranormal investigation, it's obvious that's what you're going in there for. You're hoping to have that or capture that moment. But don't get me wrong. When you do come across something like that, where you see a full body apparition with a something that follows you down, <laughs> what, four floors, and then you hear it whispering, <laughs> I'm telling you that, see that, that right there, that's the, uh, that's the, the, the pink unicorn of paranormal investigations. Okay. That is what everybody hopes for. But when you get it, it's like, who told me I really wanted this? I'm only kidding. It is. It's exciting, but it's scary. Okay. And don't let anybody tell you differently because it is, it does make you catch your breath. Uh, despite what you know or understand about the paranormal or prior experiences, uh, again, and there's different feelings. Sometimes you have encounters with certain entities that they're scary in the sense of, let's face it, you're looking at something that used to be a once living human being. Uh, but there's a different feeling. You know, they, they want to communicate and you want to communicate and, you know, you want to, and there, see, my dogs are doing their weird thing. And then there's others that when you come across them, they give off a different feeling. And I'm not going to go so far as to say malevolent, but it's almost what I call matter, meaning antimatter. Like there's something, you know, your, your spidey sense is telling you be careful be careful be careful okay and it could be for different reasons it could be a dark force entity it could be a human entity that's just nasty uh, or has unfinished business it could be a, a human spirit of somebody that was insane okay because contrary to what a lot of people think yes if you have some type of ailment you know disease or mental illness or whatever and you die and you go on into where you're supposed to, you get fixed, you're good. And you'll have a lot of people that'll say when their loved ones have passed on that they had a disease or an illness that they come back and they see them, they're good. But when that happens and you don't go all the way through and you're stuck in that in-between place, well, then guess what? You still, I would say more than 80% of the time, still carry what was wrong with you. That's I'm like why sometimes you see certain uh, evidence of this person, whether they'll still look gaunt or they'll still look sickly uh, or in the case of what I'm describing, where you're running across a person that's diseased, dis deceased, that in life, they had a severe mental illness. And that's why I'm saying that when you come across apparitions like this, or intelligent hauntings that your spidey sense is telling you okay, be careful, be careful, be careful. Because sometimes what they want to do is they want to jump you. They want to jump into you. They want to take over. Um, that's why I'm saying that don't let any paranormal investigator, I don't care how many times you've been out, to say that nothing scares them. They're lying. They're lying. Okay. All you do know how to learn how to do is to hold your ground. Or in some cases, believe it or not, retreat. If there's something, and by this I'm not telling you that initial, let, let me get out of here, feeling that everybody comes across where you feel, uh, right now I'm in imminent danger. And I can't put my finger on it, but I feel like that if I stay here, something bad is going to happen. And, you know, without letting your imagination, and, and like I said, once you do this for a while, you kind of, you really know how to, differentiate between the feelings of I'm just scared because I'm in a dark, creepy, spooky place that maybe has been abandoned like this hospital since 1978 versus there's something here that I might see or I might feel or I sense around me that doesn't wish me well. And maybe either I need to go find somebody else that's with me if you're alone, which I, 
I don't recommend. I don't recommend that. He did it, but I really don't recommend anybody for various reasons. Besides the fact of what you might come across, sometimes you go in some of these places that have been abandoned. Things can happen to you. You can have an accident. Never a good thing to go alone. But, uh, yeah. But uh, those were excellent stories. So I, that book, if he's got that stuff in there, it's got definitely to be worth reading. So guys, thank you so very much for being part of my audience. Again, my true believers, go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Go to Submit Your Story tab and let me hear what you've got to talk about. Catch me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I go ahead and I live stream on there. And if you're catching the show on a podcast, which you can find us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, Podcast, Podbean, uh, or Again, you can go to our website, MiamiGhostChronicles.com. You'll find the link to the YouTube show, or you can actually find a link to the podcast MP3 file that you can download. And again, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to download the MP3 file and listen to it when you can or whatever. It's just sometimes we just uh, have very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, quick paced life and this is the best way to listen to things so again guys thank you so much you're all wonderful and like I said before I've got some fantastic guests coming on and I know you're all going to enjoy it take care